first of all, if you put somebody on the stand, and of course Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is not on the stand, but we're just talking hypothetically now just to prove a case. If somebody goes to court, we have to call on the witnesses. So let's call on the witnesses. But we're not going to call the witnesses that you think. We call the witnesses first as his enemies. Yeah, let's start with the enemies because al shahada man bil a'da'u. The true one says even your staunch enemies will testify for you. So what was he known for? His enemies actually used to call him Sadiq al-Wa'd al-Ameen, the trustworthy one, the truthful one. Amazingly enough, even in Hercules, when that, he was uh, the time that caught one of the people from his tribe because he saw a vision and thought there would be a messenger coming from that, so he actually talked to him. Some of the people told him, he says, do you have anyone that coming from his tribe? or anyone that coming close to him that was in touch with him. They found Abu Sufyan, who was at the time of the merchant, he caught him and says, sit here. And he told them that these people from your own tribe, they will sit behind you and they will tell me if you're actually not telling me the truth. And of course, Abu Sufyan, radiallahu he was not a Muslim then, but of course, he was one of the, the, tri the honorable tribe and the honorable society. And he said he didn't, want it, he didn't like him. Then he started to look for certain faults. He couldn't find anything. He says, well, he does one, two, three, and they're all good. Yes, he, he, he tries to do good, and he asked him some questions. He asked him certain questions. He says, anyone in the Arab Peninsula called for being a prophet before? He says, no. So uh, the king says, if it was, he, maybe he was imitating someone. So he says, did his own uh, lineage or the ancestors or fathers or forefathers actually were kings of these areas? He said, no. He said, if he was, he would have been claiming his own kingdom back. Yes. And he says, and so on. So he said, what, what type of people they're actually following? He says, the, the poor. Is the such were the... The prophets. And he says, do they increase or do they decrease? He says, they increase. He says, such are the prophets. He says, do the people do it because they're forced or because of the love? He says, because they, they're convinced as such as prophets. These were the people that are not actually Muslim. This man was his enemy. He could have lied. He could have done, but he was actually telling the truth because there was none. He found a very minor thing. He says, but we will see in the future. It wasn't there yet. He says, this is the only thing that I can actually uh, look for. Now the people actually that did that, uh, and we will talk about a few things a little bit later, I won't uh, jump the gun here, but that's the first, just to, to quickly cover a few things because the time will not um, allow us to go into more details. Now let's uh, find uh, some more witnesses. We've taken some of his enemies that actually used to call him, that used to entrust him with the most worldly important decision, we'll talk about it a little bit later. Everyone knew that he did not lie. So when he says that he did, he was he known to be a liar. He says no. He says, well, he by God, he would not lie. He would not be truthful. With people and lie upon Allah, upon God Almighty. If he was known to be truthful, how could he be being truthful with people and not uh, being truthful with uh, with God Almighty? Other witnesses to take that one uh, to 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 bed. He says that now himself. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, on certain miracles he's done, like he fed a whole army with very little uh, food. He, the, he heard, he actually was to heard some, the, some of the animals, the, the moon when it split, and these people actually saw these things. Even in, in China and India, they, they've done that, they've seen the moon split. It wasn't the people that actually, that he had magic or spells over the people that were there, because others actually saw these things. When he had a, uh, a beautiful way to, uh, to say that the dates were actually were overflowing, on uh, that things and so many others and the water actually came from uh, under his knee and the rivers of run and water to quench the whole army he says Ashhadu anni rasulullah at that time he says I testify that I'm a messenger of God above all of the testimonies is Allah God Almighty himself he says Wallahu yashhadu innaka la rasulullah God Almighty testifies that you are his messengers so these are just some a sample of the testimonies that the people come on the stand and say who is this man and he is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number four is what we're talking about, the message. What was his message? So you have to cross-reference, what was he calling for? Was he calling people to say, worship me, give me all your money, or vote for me, or anything else? No. His message was very simple. Worship the one and only God. Because people right there and then, they actually had 360 idols that they used to worship. For 13 years in Mecca, the Meccan era, he simply says, la ilaha illallah Say there's only one God so you may prosper. You take that simple message that there's only one God, and you cross-reference it with every other prophet and messenger before him, you will find out it actually falls in line with every prophet and messenger. 
There's only one God. Worship Him. Do this to go to heaven. And don't do this so you can stay away from the hellfire. So we ask people, what is it exactly that you don't like about this message? Or what makes him not a messenger if he simply tells people to worship God Almighty? Nothing, absolutely nothing in it for him. As a matter of fact, people came up to him and he said, listen, stop saying there's only one God who will kill you. That didn't work. Or stop saying there's one God if you're, if you're after money will make you the richest man alive. That didn't work. And people came in and said, said if you stop saying there's only one God, if women you're after will give you all the women you want. Absolutely not. And he says, if you want to be our king, we will make you our king. If it's power you're after, we will give you the power. If it's voodoo that you have, we will give you the best exorcist. If it's an illness that you have, we'll get you the best doctors. He listened, as you will see later on, how he listened. He says, are you finished? Even though the prophetic tradition is weak, we understand that. But the seerah is not dealt with accordingly to the ahkam, or the rulings. So he says, if you put the sun in my right hand, and the moon in my left hand, I will not stop saying, there's only one God or die for it. So he wasn't after his own whims and desires. As a matter of fact, he died as a poor man. May peace and blessings of God Almighty be unto him. And he could have been the richest man. He could have had everything. And of course, people have so many things to uh, accuse or abuse. Inshallah, hopefully we can give you that the knowledge of the proper way of who Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, uh, was. So the number four is for the simple fact that is the message. What is this message? Is the for the simple fact that there's only one God. He coincides with everybody else before him. As a matter of fact, comes back and rectifies what was uh, misinterpreted or diverted or led astray before him. Go back to the original. The message was very simple. There's only one God. Worship him. And that coincides and in line with every prophet and messenger and makes sense. And he's received it, of course, from the archangel Gabriel. So the message was very simple, straightforward. There's only one God, which makes him a prophet. Number three. Now we talked about the message. Now let's cross-reference now. What is the actual message? The message came from the Quran. So the Quran, because every prophet and messenger has a miracle to prove their leader or his messenger than the prophet and so on. So we take a look at the Quran in itself. For every prophet has the messenger. So like we say, uh, Moses, may peace be upon him, had the... Uh, uh, the, the miracle of the, the staff because at the time that people liked uh, magic and so on. However, and Isa may peace be upon him, Jesus may peace be upon him, also had the, the miracle of medicine because at that time it pertained to these type of people and they were into that type of thing. Yes. But when God Almighty challenged the Arabs because the language was their strength, they actually used to teach people poetry. And he says, a man came up to him, he says, I can't remember how many rakat, how many units of prayer to do. So the man came up to him, he says, listen, I'll give you a poem. You will understand. He says, in the salat al-arba'un fa'arba, thumma thalat yitba'un arba thumma salat al-fajr al He says, four, then four, then three, then four, then two. He got it for a poetry. And they were challenged with their own because they were used to uh, boast about how uh, eloquent they are and the, and the genius of the language and the science of the language that they had under God. So God Almighty said actually that there's, uh, here is this book that is going to be in your own language. Alif Lam Mim. Alif Lam Mim. These are the letters that this book is made of. Thalik Al Kitab. Here is the book. Hudan Lil Mutaqeen. Guidance those who have piety or conscience of God. So God Almighty challenged them in their own field. That God Almighty actually told them in that Quran, which is a live language, we have the original, we never lost it. It was memorized, written at the time of the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and No one can deny the fact that we do not differ upon it. And we have the miracles, and we talked about the scientific miracles of it, and so many others. And we, I heard this from Sheikh Khalid Yassin, Zallallahu once, to prove to you from this fact that we actually memorize this, preserved as Allah, as God Almighty, has promised to preserve the Quran. He said that if all denominations or all ways of life or all religions agreed to throw all the scriptures, all the divine scriptures in the ocean, get rid of them. We all agreed to get rid of all the divine scriptures, which is the only one book that will come back to life and immediately. The only answer is the Quran, because we memorize it off by heart. No one can differ upon it. And this is something that we do from, uh, the, uh, from the very early stages. And the, whether you speak Arabic or not, the people actually memorize the Quran. So no one can actually defy that. The actual miracle of the Quran in itself that has the uh, news from what the past, how to live your life in the present, and what will come in the future. And that message we talked about, the oneness of God Almighty, is actually one-third of the Quran. 
one third of the Quran. So when the people say that what is the message of the Quran, the oneness of God is one third of it. And when people say that this Quran it comes from satanic verses, amazingly enough, when I have these people coming into the center, when I have these uh, tours, I tell them, okay, let's go with that. Let's go with the idea that what uh, we seek refuge in God from that. It's a uh, you know satanic verses you've heard. Okay, Satan is the author of the Quran. So that's uh, interesting because in the Quran it says when you read the Quran, when you recite the Quran, seek refuge in God from Satan the rejected. Can you imagine Satan is the author of the book? He says, hmm, before you read my book, seek refuge in God from me. And oh, I forgot to mention a few things. If you follow me, you go straight to hell. <laughs> oh yes, I am your worst enemy. Go ahead, buy my book. <laughs> Imagine, imagine that's the case when people actually say that these are satanic verses. Or the other ones that says that it is Muhammad that wrote the book. Amazing. Don't you know that actually Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, did not know how to read or write? Surprise. Interestingly enough, that Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, did not know how to read or write. Ummi. Ummi was that actually comes from the mother, the word um. He was that taught by that nature, primal instinct. He was not taught. And these people accuse him for actually taking over from others. As a matter of fact, we know that the Bible has been translated on the 18th century. It wasn't at the time of the Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, just in case that people think that he was actually trying to copy wholesale from the Bible. And not to mention that these verses, there is a very challenging verses, as we talked about it before, and the Quran in itself, the Quran in itself has uh, a challenge a challenge of people that stands the test of time. There was a challenge at the time of uh, Revelation that God Almighty says, believe it or not, to the uncle of Prophet Muhammad, may peace upon him, that he will not go to, he will not become a Muslim. Even then, he knew that for years while he was alive, he could have simply said, well, guess what? I want to become a Muslim. What do you think of your Quran now? He didn't. And of course, there are other ones, other miracles of the Quran that actually testified that says, Holy but Rome. They were right there. The Roman were actually beaten. He says that God Almighty says, well, And after they're being defeated, they will be victorious. A few, a few, a few, day, a few uh, years. So these were miracles on hand. They are testified. And again, God Almighty gave the people a challenge, as we mentioned previously. He says, Listen, if you want to prove this book is not from God Almighty, you do this. If you do this, file this book under G. And he will tell he will give you another challenge. You will never be able to do this with the Quran. Since you will never be able to do this, Fatakunar Alati This will be stay away from the, the Quran. Since this is one verse or one chapter or two chapters, and that stand, the test still stands up to now. Okay, speaking of that much, even Prophet Muhammad says, La tatruni, do not boast about me, but say about me that I am. Do not say that I am the Son of God or God incarnate or divine or so on. I am a human being, just like you. The difference is I receive revelations. Now, uh, where the topic we're talking about now, number four, is akhlaq, moral conduct, behavior, etiquettes, manners. God Almighty testifies. In the Quran, he says, gives him this beautiful medal of honor. Is wa inna kala ala khulukun azim. Indeed, you are the best of moral conduct behaviors, because we have to walk the talk. Every human being is a there is a measuring stick, and God Almighty says that He is the best of moral conduct. As a matter of fact, He says, "I am sent to complete the best of moral conduct," and so on. One of the reasons that we have to do this cross reference is to cross it from the book, what God Almighty testifies that He is. His message was this. The Quran says do these things. It's all about enjoining good and forbidding evil. How to be the best human beings. That even so the some of the scholars says that the acts of worship in the Quran actually to give you a better moral conduct. And for example, the, the, the fasting is actually to uh, talk about uh, taqwa, give you la'allakum tattaqoon. Uh, the salah is uh, warded off evil. The zakah is to teach you to give, the, to, ward, to heal you from the illness of the hoarding, the silver and gold, the illness of the heart. And being hajj, it teaches you patience. So you understand that every aspect of our worship is to become a better human being. So Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is the best of creations. So you walk the talk. And how was it then, if when Prophet Muhammad May peace be upon him. When people wanted to kill him, even though they did not believe in his message, they still trusted with him with the most uh, worldly possession, the most expensive one. Even though that he wanted, he knew about it. You and I, I'm asking you, brothers and sisters out there now, put yourself in that position. If somebody wants to kill you, 
but you have something of their own, what would you do? I'm pretty sure you say, you, don't you know what you're talking to? You want to mess with me? And so on. No, I, now I've confiscated your stuff. But it wasn't for Prophet Muhammad because he was the best of creation. He says, Ya Ali, his, his cousin, he says, you stay here. But when you wake up in the morning, you give them back their rightful owners. And he taught us, La takhul man khan. Do not betray those who betray you. Be good to those who are bad to you. Give those who deprive you. Reach for those who cut you off. And so on. As a matter of fact, he was the lead in so many moral conduct and ethics that he had a young girl that wanted to come and join him in a, uh, to, 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 to witness a, a war. And he actually, after the war, he was looking for someone. This young girl is actually narrating this prophetic tradition. And he says, as if he was looking for me, and he had this qalada, this beautiful necklace, as the spoils of war, and she ran, she ran to him and says, here I am, here I am, a messenger of Allah, والسلام, and he said, he put that on her, on her own, he says, by Allah, I will never take this necklace from my own neck anymore, and she put in her will that she wanted to be buried with this necklace, and on judgment day, she wants to run to him and says, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, والسلام, can you remember me? I am the one that you put this necklace, this necklace. You see how he actually talked to the young. How he, he actually had a, a young boy called uh, uh, Umayyad. And, uh, he had a, a, a bird called Nugayr. And he actually used to talk to him, Hayya Umayyad, how is a Nugayr, this bird? And one day he saw him crying. He stayed with him. What happened? He's mad to Nugayr. The Nugayr, that bird died. He stayed with him to leave him with a smile on his face as he saw him with a uh, a tear in his eyes. I understand there's so much to share on the comes to akhlaq, but even though when a man promised to meet him at a certain time because he wanted to keep a covenant and be truthful to others, after two days he waited for him, he says, At'abtani, I waited for you, and so many others. We cannot comprehend the amount of moral conduct that Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, was known for how to deal with human beings, not only human beings, even animals and every others. May best be job. So we said the proof. The proof is in the pudding. So we say the fruit of this whole thing. So when we talk about you know, the testimony of people, when we talk about the message, when we talk about the Quran, when we talk about the moral conduct as you walk the talk of everything, so now what is the outcome? The fruit, this whole thing. Look at it started with one human being. This whole ummah started with one, Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him. It is now 1.5 or 1.7 billion Muslims around the world saying there's only one God, declaring this, being good, staying away from evil, declaring, uh, enjoining good, forbidding evil, trying to change their life to a better, do, living their life according to modesty, humbleness, and all these beauty of the teaching of Islam, how to help one another, how to have the humanity being come on a straight path, the unity, the oneness, and regardless of people of color, creed, and face, you are my brother in, in humanity, as we mentioned earlier. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala done that. So look at the fruit of this. Look at the fruit of uh, Muslims, and we say that we understand that we're no, we're no angels. We're human beings just like everybody else. But I'm talking about those who practice Islam, those who actually live and walk the talk, like Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, when Aisha, may, peace be, may God be pleased with her, when she was asked about how was he, he says he was a walk in Quran. So now how it changed the human being. Those who actually used to kill one another are now being bonded. The fruit of that is the Quran and the message of Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him. And of course, every history will testify that no migration has taken place without bloodshed. The only migration that did not take bloodshed was the migrants from Mecca that went to Medina for Ansar. And help one another, and that's another topic on its own. It's going to take another hour to explain, but I'm not going to go into details. But you see how God Almighty changed, and the message, the fruit, for those people that used to kill one another now become uh, bo bosom buddies. Those who actually used to drink alcohol, fornicate, and marry different women, and all women that wants to have any intimate relations with anyone, and claim that child to be uh, that man, now is changed and restricted certain things, uh, give away the slavery, turning this whole humanity around to be the best of human beings, to be truthful and honest, get rid of way of the usury. And all these moral conducts is the fruit of Islam from the Quran and Sunnah. And that in a nutshell, there's so much to share. But just to give you an example for the one, two, three, and four, and five, is the proof is in the pudding, as you will see those who actually established Islam in their life are the best of human beings accordingly. Even in the Bible mentioned, you will know them from the fruit, and that is the best of teaching of Islam. Please subscribe to our channel. Kindly like, share, and comment on our videos. If anyone benefits because of your like and share, 
Then God may provide you with unlimited reward which is called Sadaqat al Jariyah in Islam. Sadaqat al Jariyah is continuous rewards received for good actions, deeds, and spreading knowledge. It is a gift that not only benefits us in this life, but also benefits us and our loved ones in the hereafter. According to the hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him, narrated by Muslim. When a person dies, all the deeds end except three. A continuing charity, beneficial knowledge, and a child who prays for them.